Hi, this is Mrs. Robel. This video is for Chapter 10, Part 1, The Mole. So today we're going to be learning about a counting device. You may have been to the store and didn't realize that you were buying materials in certain quantities. For instance, uh, here's a pack of pencils. These china markers, they are uh, purchased in units of 12. If you've ever gone to buy printer paper, you may not realize this, but you've been buying paper in what we call a ream, and a ream has about 500 sheets of paper in a pack. Well, chemists, they devised a system where they're looking at the mole, and the mole is a counting device. So how does the mole relate to chemistry? Well, we wanted to come up with a way to determine how many particles of matter are there in an amount. And by doing that, the chemist came up with a system of the mole. Now the mole, you probably think it's an animal, but it actually is a counting device. And this counting device has a relationship between the number of particles and moles. So like I said, chemists needed a convenient way to count the number of atoms. And please remember, atoms are very tiny. So because they're very tiny, the amount is huge. So when you look at when you look at a mole, please note that we're looking at 6.02 times 10 to 23rd atoms. So um, what they decided is that if you have 12 grams of pure uh, mass number 12 carbon, it should have 6.02 times 10 to 23rd atoms, and they. They named this number in um, honor of a chemist by the name of Avogadro. So we call this Avogadro's number. Now let me show you how does this counting device get used. Well, it's a conversion factor. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at how you convert moles to particles. So please note in this type of problem, we're looking at 3.5 moles of sucrose. Notice we dropped the E. That's just a way to abbreviate the term mole. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a conversion factor and that conversion factor is 6.02 times 10 to 23rd. Notice that the particles is on top and the moles is on the bottom. So we're going to take this 3.5 moles and we're going to multiply it by this conversion factor. So when we do that, please note that the moles cancel out and we're essentially left with particles. And you have to be very careful that you make sure you include all of your units because if you do not, you're going to get some number and it may not be the right number that you need. So please remember, keep all your units when you are doing conversions. Here's another example where we were going in the opposite direction. So we're going from particles to moles. And once again, we're going to use a conversion factor. Notice that the moles is on top, whereas Avogadro's number is on the bottom. And the reason why is we want to essentially cancel out units. That's why we flip the conversion factor. So here we have sucrose, and notice that we're trying to go from particles of a substance to moles of a substance. So we have the particles canceling out and we're left with moles. And once again, please remember that moles were just lopping off the E as an abbreviation. Now, when we're looking at moles, please remember that the masses have to be different. So if we have two different elements, one's copper, one's carbon, they cannot have the same mass. Because remember, we're adding electrons, we're adding protons, we're adding neutrons. So the mass should be different. Now with molar mass, okay, molar mass is essentially the amount that is found in one mole of a substance. So when you're talking about molar mass, we're talking about a pure substance. So it could be an element, it could be a compound. And notice that it's actually equivalent to the atomic mass. So you just have to look on the periodic table and that number that is listed under the element symbol 
will be the mass that you're essentially going to count up in that one mole. So please, please note, if you have one mole of iron, that in that one mole of iron we have 6.02 times 10 to 23rd atoms of iron. Okay, so when we're using molar mass, please note that once again we're looking at conversion factors and when we do that, the number of moles cancels out and we're left with mass. So once again, you have to include your units, otherwise you're going to have a naked number and it means nothing. And it may be the wrong number, okay? So please note, if you have three moles of copper, we're going to multiply it by the molar mass. So for each mole of copper, if you look under the element symbol copper, it has 63.546 grams. And when you multiply these two numbers together, you're left with 191 grams of copper. So three moles of copper have a mass of 191 grams. So with molar mass, we're always going to the periodic table to find out the mass of that element. Okay, I'm going to leave you with this diagram. And this diagram is essential for this part of the chapter. It's a good way to determine which type of conversion factor you're going to use. So notice if you go from mass to moles, you're essentially going to use this conversion factor. So one mole divided by the number of grams for that substance. If you're going the opposite direction, you're going to use the opposite arrow. If you're going from moles to particles, okay, so if you're going in this direction, notice that you're going to use this conversion factor, which is Avogadro's number divided by moles, and that'll give you the number of particles. If you're going from particles to moles, notice that you're going to use the other arrow. But like I said, this diagram is extremely helpful for deciding what type of conversion factor you're going to use.